Hey there. Sorry, it looks like I had some uh, technical issues earlier. But um, anyways, just to hop back into the topic, um, most people have struggled up. So basically what I was explaining before is that um, most people in America, they, they struggle. They struggle financially. That it just It just is what it is. I mean, especially after the pandemic, especially after the pandemic and things got worse, people struggle financially. People struggle to make ends meet. People struggle. And so, you know, this idea of um, struggle love, right? This idea of you should not have to struggle. You should not have to struggle in a relationship. You should not have to struggle um, financially. You should not have to struggle with resources. Um, that is all a illusion. It's a fantasy. It's not reality. Most people struggle. <laughs> Most men and women in America struggle financially not only to make ends meet, but just to live life. And so I think it's really important. I think it's extremely important um, to have this understanding so that when you are going throughout life, when you are making decisions, when even when you are picking somebody that you want to be in a relationship with, you are fully aware that, hey, the majority of Americans struggle. That is a part of life. That is a part of living in this economy. People struggle. And that does not necessarily mean that that you're bad. That doesn't mean that that person is bad. It doesn't mean that that person is less valuable. But it's extremely important. I think it's extremely important to have healthy and real expectations. Because I think what's happened, and I can say this as a woman, and I can say this as a woman who has very many female friends. You know, we have been told this narrative time and time again, right? Where it generally goes something like, here's a Prince Charming, you know what I mean? Knight in Charming, Shining Armor. It's some form or fashion of that some form or fashion. This guy comes in and essentially alleviates a lot of the pressure and just swoops you off your feet and then you go and live happily ever after. And that's that's some version of what most of us women have been told our entire life. And so I think sometimes even without us knowing it, we go, we go throughout life um, programmed with this message, programmed with this message of, oh, Prince Charming is coming or programmed with this message of, oh, you know, this person or that person, or this, whether it's, oh, my Boaz, you may hear that in church, or my knight in charming armor, or somebody who's going to treat me like a queen, all these little different things that we hear that are kind of cute, I guess, but it's, it's so far, it is so far disconnected from the reality of how people actually live. Because again, most people in America specifically, they struggle and they struggle financially. And again, that does not make you a bad person. It does not mean that you're about, it does not necessarily mean there's, there's anything wrong with you. Sometimes in order for you to get towards a goal, right? For example, let's say you want to lose weight. Okay, if you're 100 pounds overweight, that's not easy. You have to struggle. You have to work out and struggle. You have to, you know, cut back on certain foods and struggle. Like there is struggle associated with change and struggle associated with progress. And so... This idea of, you know, I don't want to struggle up or I don't want to broke dusty or I don't want all those different things. I don't want to settle. You know, uh, how many times have I heard that I don't want to settle? I don't want to settle. I don't want to settle. And I used to actually, I used to actually believe that and understand that and, 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 and get that. But now I'm starting to understand that so many times when I hear I don't want to settle, it is based upon false premises. It is based upon, I don't want to settle with this person that I feel like is not financially up to par. And that is specifically when I, what I want to address. Because again, if you're living in America, you most likely have struggle love. But what I mean about struggle love, you most likely are in a situation where maybe finances are not 100%, or maybe finances are not to the point where you want them to be. It doesn't mean that you're not progressing towards something better. It doesn't mean you're not building. But majority of us did not grow up with a trust fund, especially if you were Black or African American. Most of us definitely didn't grow up with a trust fund with our name on it in properties and different inheritance, different things, you know, that are just waiting for us because we know our wealth was stolen from us. Let's, let's just be real. So, you know, for all the women who are leveling up or securing their bag or going and getting their education and, and outpacing men, because evidently, evidently there's this idea that black women are outpacing men. If we look at the statistics, we are far from that reality. We are way far from that reality. So anyways, thank you for those who have joined. Please like, subscribe. Um, please please get the likes up. Um, it says none of this language is considered bashing to black women. 
case with statistics is. But you said, but Kevin Samuels with statistics? I'm, I'm assuming case is Kevin Samuels, since I know many of you guys are Kevin Samuels fans. Um, so yes, please um, get the likes up. Um, thank you for those who have been so generous to send in support. Again, I would love to bring you more content like this, but I need your support in order to do so. So you can find me on Cash App, Shay Charde. You can also find me on Venmo. Get the likes up. Um, get the comments up. Please tag anybody on this video who you think will find it interesting or useful. Um, but again, so we're talking about struggle love. And somebody asked me actually earlier, okay, so what is struggle love? So I personally, I have seen struggle love de de defined as um, there's really, really a lot of different, you know, I guess, interpretations of this. But for me, at the end of the day, I've seen it as any relationship where a person is not able to um, provide a level of financial security or even lavishness. Like that's, that's really how I've seen it. Struggle love, AKA this guy is not able to give me the, the kinds of gifts consistently or the kinds of financial security that I want. That is how I have seen struggle love defined. Um, and of course the interpretation may change based upon who you talk about. There's also this idea of, I don't want to build a boo. I don't want to build a man, right? I don't want to build a Bob, Right. Again, this this whole idea of a woman getting with a man, right, who was not where he needs to be, whether it's financially in his career, um, with his assets, with his income or whatever. And so this idea of like as a woman, I am not going to settle on a man or I'm not going to settle with somebody who is not financially already at this place or not already hasn't reached this, you know, economic status that I want. I'm not going to settle on him. I'm not going to settle on a guy who's here. I want to, I want to go with the guy who was there. Right. And so again, there's this huge narrative. You have all these hypergamy and femininity channels that really push women, push women to go towards these high value or these high earning men, whatever that looks like. And oftentimes, oftentimes what I've seen so very often is this narrative is I as a woman, I have, you know, I've gotten my degree. I can pay my own bills. I have my own apartment, have my own car. I make my own money. So therefore I need a man who's making at least as much as me, if not more. And so again, anytime I hear this idea of settling or struggle love, it is almost always a hundred percent associated with a person's lack of financial standing or their lack of money, whatever that may be. And again, the problem I have with that idea of struggle love is because now you are essentially talking about the majority of the American population because most people in America struggle because we live in an economy that is based upon competition. And anytime you're in competition, there is struggle, there is fighting, there is force, there is friction. There's really no way, there's really no way around that. So again, unless you are born in like a royal family, which, or you're, you know, where you have, again, some trust funds, you know, waiting for you, which if you're black, that's, Majority, that's not going to be your, uh, that's not really going to be your reality unless you come from, from some like African royal lineage. Um, many of us just don't grow up like that. And so this idea of not struggling in any capacity, I think is, is just far, it's so far from reality. It's now become detrimental. Um, yeah, so settle down that type of language they don't consider bashing. Yeah. Or settle date down. Yeah. It, it, like I said, this whole idea of settling. Ugh. It's like settle for what? I mean, settle, settle down. That necessarily doesn't have to have, settling down doesn't have to be a bad thing. But oftentimes you hear, oh, well, I don't want to settle. And it's like, okay, we'll settle for what? Because to settle down is essentially to settle, is to choose something, is to say, okay, this is where I'm going to plant my feet. This is where I'm going to build. It's like you have to settle on something before you can really build a home. But okay, so again, so for those... I wanted to share a few stats for those who are convinced that they do not want to, um, they don't want to have struggle love, or they are convinced that they, they don't deserve struggle love, or they shouldn't have to deal with struggle love. And again, if we're, if we are associating struggle with finances or money, as most people do, here are just, uh, there's just a few stats. Like here's actually what is going on in America today. Here's what's going on with people, right? So 24% of black women live below the poverty line. And again, I mean, this if you just Google this, literally Washington Post, I just saw an article from Washington Post that posted a few weeks ago where they were talking about the current economic status of, of black and Hispanic women in particular and how they are essentially at the bottom of wages. Even, you know, even this whole talk of, you know, black women outpacing men, which I hear, or black women getting more education, all these kinds of things. At the end of the day, black women and immigrant Hispanic women specifically are still the lowest paid 
in the U.S., right? So let's just, <laughs> let's just be clear about that. So it is 25% of Black women live below the poverty line, like 24%. 26% of black women make over $50,000. So that's basically like one in fourth. One in fourth of black women make over $50,000. So that basically means 75% of black women, like basically 75% almost make below $50,000 below. So let's just, let's just start there. And again, you know, the reason to me that the reason to me that that's, that stat in particular is so alarming is because I can just say for me, the amount of shows that I've seen, even if I go on Kevin Samuels, which again, a lot of you guys watch his stuff, he's become so popular. I can't tell you how many times I've seen his videos and a woman is calling in and she's just like, oh yeah, I make six figures. Oh yeah, like I'm, I'm financially stable. It's like, either he seems to be attracting a ton of high earning women which based upon the stats is a very low majority, but either he seems to be attracting like all of the high earning black women or there's just women on there who are lying. It's like it's either or because based upon the stats, most women are not making a lot of income like that. And I think that's important to note so that as again, as you're moving forward and moving into life, you can have an accurate estimation of self know what to expect, and then also know where to, where you can build. You know what I mean? Know, okay, who well, who is on my level or who is worth talking to or whatever. We don't get all these grandiose ideas of, oh, he's not making six or seven figures, so I'm not going to settle because most people aren't, right? But moving on, other stats. Um, so this is nearly, it's like about 42%, about 42% of working Americans make $15. About 42% make around like $15 minimum wage. And again, these are numbers that I pulled from Washington Post, like Washington Post, Black Demographics, um, Bureau, I think it's the Bureau of Labor of Statistics. Some of these things, this was even before the pandemic. So now after the pandemic, you can imagine it's a lot worse. Uh, but that is 40%. That's, that is almost like half of Americans who make right at about minimum wage, $15 an hour. And there's only four states. It is, what is it? It is... Um, I think it is Kentucky, Arkansas, West Virginia, and Mississippi. Those are the only four states where you can afford a two-bedroom on $15 an hour. Those are the only, only four states. All the other states, if you're making $50 an hour and you're living, you're struggling. You can't afford a two-bedroom. It just it is what it is. And again, it is almost, almost half of Americans who are at that $15 an hour mark. And again, that doesn't mean that they're worse than anyone. It doesn't mean that they're even lazy. It doesn't mean that they're not working hard. It is a hard economy that we live in, okay? <laughs> There's a pandemic. There's different things that have happened and that are going on to this day to make it difficult for, for people to financially move forward. It does not mean that you have to stay there. It does that mean you can't work together? It does that mean you cannot improve your situation? But we have to get out of this mindset that as a woman, there's not ever going to be any struggle, especially if you desire to work with a man or to get in a relationship with a man. Because again, most men live in this economy that we live in. That is based upon competition and that is based upon struggle. And it is extremely important as a woman to know that so that you don't come in with these false fantasy grandiose expectations of he needs to already have this when most Americans don't have that. They just don't. So, okay, so here's a few other statistics, right? It said 78% of employees, and these are people who are in the workforce, and this is according to Washington Post, 78% of employees earn just enough money to pay their bills each month, just enough. If they were to miss a paycheck, some of those bills would go unpaid. So that is the definition of living paycheck to paycheck. That means if you miss a bill or if you miss a paycheck, one of your bills is going to go unpaid. The majority of Americans, that is 78% of people who are working in the workforce, live paycheck, paycheck to paycheck, which means if they don't get paid, a bill will go unpaid. That is most people in America. So again, this idea of I don't want struggle of, I don't want to build a boo. I don't want to settle down on a man that doesn't have enough money. You're looking at the common experience, <laughs> the common experience of living in America as a man and a woman is to struggle financially in this economy. That it just is what it is. It is what it is. Some other stats. It says three in 10 people have no emergency savings. That means if your car goes out, if you even have a car, that means if, God forbid, your light goes out, you have an extra medical bill, 
you need to buy something, whatever. If you have an extra expense, which most of us do because we because life happens, three out of 10 people don't have any savings to pull from. That's a pretty high amount. 33% of Americans say they know a relative who put off medical treatment because it was too expensive. That is one in th- one out of three people. One out of three people. That means if you take three people, you line three people up in a row, at least one of those people is going to know a, a friend or a relative who had to stop medical treatment because it was too expensive. That is a, an exorbitant amount. That is a really high amount of people. So again, any ideas, any ideas that we have that, oh, you shouldn't have to struggle. You shouldn't have to X, Y, and Z, A, B, and Z. There are people who struggle and work extremely hard, extremely hard, and yet they still can't afford their, they can't afford their medical bills. And that's not necessarily because they are lazy. That's necessarily because there's anything wrong with them. It's because life is hard sometimes and because the economy is not necessarily in our favor. Again, what I am not saying is that things can't change. I'm not saying you can't work towards something better or you can't build towards something better. But I think we have got to know if you're a woman, especially if you're a single woman, especially out there, you have got to know that um, what many of us women heard, many of the Disney movies that we heard, saw, Prince Charming, all these different things, that is not the experience for most people. Yes, there are women who in their 20s marry a multimillionaire or an athlete. That happens. If you want that lifestyle, of course, there are things associated with that lifestyle. There is, there is you know, a certain level of behavior that is expected. There is, there's protocol that's expected. It's political. You just don't marry a rich guy and think, oh, it's all going to be dandy and happy. Like, even if you do as a young woman land or get into that kind of lifestyle, there is a, there is all these expectations and rules associated with being in it. So you want to understand that it's, it's not just, you know, tulips and daisies, but for the majority of people, that's not, that's not it. They have to struggle to get to a point to where they are financially stable or they're financially doing well. There's nothing wrong with that. That is just the reality. So thank you for those who have joined on. Please um, get the likes up. Please comment, subscribe. Thank you. Thank you in advance for those who have been so generous to support. Um, I would love to bring more content like this to you, but I need your support in order to do that. So you can find me on Cash App, Shea You can also find me on Venmo. You can also feel free to send in a super chat. Um, I, I appreciate you guys. Um, and now I see this financial requirements for a partner should be determined on an individual basis. Yeah, I totally agree. Of course, there should. I mean, all relationships, all relationships, obviously, are going to be, you know, negotiated between the two parties in it. Um, one of the things that I wanted to address specifically. And I don't know. I don't know if it is, you know, this I see there's a lot of hypergamy channels out there. There's a lot of, you know, channels of dating up or marrying up, which I don't, there's nothing wrong with that. I, I don't, if, if, if you're a woman, especially, and you prefer to date a man that makes more than you, I don't think there's anything wrong with that um, inherently, but I'm, I'm wanting to specifically address this idea that um, anything less than that is just like, oh, struggle or, oh, this person is lazy or this person's on my level X, Y, and Z. Because again, that's actually, hap- that happens to me in the majority experience. The majority experience in America is that there is financial struggle and that even people who work hard, I know, for example, you know, I live in the Bay Area, right? And so you making six figures, $100,000 in the Bay Area, okay, that's you, that's you living a basic life. You're not poor, but you're not rich. That's okay. Enough money for you to pay rent, for you to have decent food and not be on beans and rice, maybe pay your car note, um, if you have school debt, maybe pay that off depending on how much, and then that's it. So you make you making six figures in the Bay Area, it's not really getting you far. You're gonna have to really get into the twos and the three thousands before you are doing anything. And then now with homes, your average your average start, start a home in the Bay Area right now being around two million dollars. I I mean I can think off the top of my head. I, I know multiple people who who are working in Apple, working in Google, working in Facebook, making six figures grinding 12, 13 hours, coming back home to their, you know, to their young kids, yet they can't afford a home in the Bay Area because a home is, is too many, a starter home is so many dollars. So even if you're making 150,000, 200,000, what some of them are between the cost of, you know, living, rent, food, all those different things, how are you going to get, how are you going to get in the house with $2 million 
when you have different companies who are coming and getting all cash offers. <laughs> anyway, the reason I'm saying that, the reason I'm saying that is because um, I, I think it's great to want to do better and you should want to do better. Like, hey, I have I have plans to do better. Like, I don't plan on living in a, um, you know, I don't plan on living in a, a small apartment my entire life. You know what I mean? I think it's good to want and to desire to move up. But um, the point is a lot of people do struggle financially, even people with college degrees, even people working in great high paying incomes in, in Google and Facebook. I know these people working with Apple, they still struggle financially. And so um, again, you don't really hear that. I think a lot of times on social media, we as women, especially hear, oh, hypergamy, hypergamy, here's how to level up. Here's how to get a guy to pay for all your bills. Here's, here's how to get a guy to you know, buy you dinner. I mean, there's even this whole idea of a dinner whore. This whole idea of a dinner whore has become so so popular, where it's like women just wanted to go out to get free meals. Um, and like this idea of like, okay, as a woman, this guy has to just buy me all these material things, all these material things. And I'm like, the economy, it's gotten hard in the pandemic, it's gotten even worse. And it seems like even though the economy has gotten worse, expectations, especially expectations for women have not changed. And I don't know that that's healthy, um, just because I don't think it's actually based upon reality. And so I think it is important to know what is actually going on, what are people's actual day-to-day -day experience, so that as you are moving forward as a woman, as you are moving forward in your relationships or whatever, you can just, you can have a more grounded ex expectation. You can have a more a grounded sense of reality. Doesn't mean you can't desire to do better. Doesn't mean you can't desire a guy with certain qualities or whatever, but you have to know what is the reality. Um, and, and even this idea, you said free food, I'm not that desperate. Good. <laughs> You're good. I know not all people are like that. Not all people are like that, um, unfortunately. I mean, there is a reason that there is a term dinner whore. There is a reason that that exists. Um, I see the divestment movement is mainly about money, just my opinion. Yeah, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I guess, learning more about the ideology of the divestment movement. That's something I'm, I'm still... I'm still um, looking into, but from what I from what I see, there's certainly this idea of of luxury, of women deserve luxury, and you know, as a woman, I like luxurious things. I like having luxurious experience. I don't most women that I know do, but I don't know that I can say I deserve it. Uh, I think you work for it. I think it's something that maybe you, you know, as you work hard or as you build or whatever, it, you can you can certainly achieve that but I don't think it's like oh just because I'm born I deserve luxury because okay again how about the 80 percent of people who live paycheck to paycheck don't they deserve lux luxury but if they make miss one paycheck they a bill can't go paid so I'm just like to me the ideology it just doesn't really match with people's actual real life experience today um and that's where I, I'm challenged um so anyways for those thank you for those who are on please like please get the comments up um again i'd love to send more support like this um or just to show more content like this but i need your support in order to do so so please send any love you want on um on my cash up you can find me shay Charday or venmo um also tag anyone on this that you think think may find this content helpful so on to a few other stats that i found alarming and again the reason the reason i wanted to talk about this is because you don't hear this if you go on social media, all you are seeing is, you know, black women in luxury or just women in luxury, period. You know, go headed over to vacations. People having their new their new Gucci or Prada bag or whatever. Women got a new outfit, you know, the, the, the newest fashion. Like, how, how many influencers do we all know or even follow or like who it is just luxury all the time? It's beauty all the time. It's the best restaurants. It's the newest clothes. Like... How many times do we see that? And of course, you know, as a woman, I'll go and I'll be like, oh my gosh, I love that dress. I want that dress. Or, oh man, look at that beautiful kitchen or look at that beautiful home. Like we see that every single day. And, you know, what I started to notice is that what I saw portrayed was not matching with reality. It's not matching with your, your average everyday experience. And if you are just a person who, whether you, maybe you are a hard worker, maybe you do how you've had a good job, but the pandemic happened. It happened to all of us. And you've had a hard time. You've been struggling since then. Or, okay, you're in an awkward place in your career, or you're trying to shift careers and start something new. It's like we all find ourselves in these different areas in our life. And it, sometimes that means, okay, maybe financially we're not going to be where we want to be. Or maybe, you know, my life isn't going to be as picture perfect. 
and that is okay. It is okay. It is a woman. It's okay if you're a woman and you're not having the newest bag every 15 seconds or you're not, you know, going out and having all these lavish gifts put on you. Like, it's okay if that's not your experience because again, for most of us, it's not. But what is not okay for me is is for, for a fantasy life to be portrayed and to be pushed as this is what you need to have. This is what you should have. This is what you need to aspire to when most people don't live that way. Well, they just don't, when that's not the average experience, <laughs> you know? Um, okay, so here's a few other daunting stats that I saw. I always said this before, you know, in 2019, 39 million people earned less than $15 an hour. Um, and of course, after COVID, this number went down even further between unemployment, all those different things. How many small businesses do we all? I bet you everyone on this on this or who can hear this knows of at least one small business or business that just went completely underwater. All of us. That doesn't mean those those people, those business owners didn't work hard. Doesn't mean that. Doesn't mean that they didn't have a good strong business plan or, you know, then maybe they were lazy. But you know, life happens to all of us. Life happens to all of us. Um, and then here's another of, of even more daunting um, statistic. So as I mentioned, I mentioned this earlier in the podcast, Black and Hispanic women are the most susceptible to low-wage, low-income jobs, according to the Washington Post. I just saw this post. This was, I think, like a few a few weeks ago they posted this. And it said, Black, Hisp I mean, Black women and immigrant Hispanic women are the most susceptible to low-wage of all people, of all races, of all, you know, all genders. They are the most susceptible. It says immigrant Hispanic women make, they, they say 46% of Hispanic women earn less than $15 an hour. That's below minimum wage in, in a few states. And 39%, that's almost 40% of black women earn less than $15 an hour. This was just posted a few weeks ago in the Washington Post, which is a very widely known um, news publication. That's almost 40% of black women. That's over one third of us. Over one third of black women make at or below minimum wage. So, that is the reality. That is the reality. So this is so hint, this is the purpose of my paddle. Most people have struggled up. The reason most people have struggled up is because most people struggle financially. And especially if you were if you were a woman, if you were a single woman, if you were a single black woman, um, you tend to struggle more financially. And I don't know why, I don't know why there is such a push for us to like to me, it feels like a fantasy. And I don't know if the reason there is this whole idea of like, okay, black women deserve luxury or black women deserve X, Y, and Z. I don't know if that's like some sense of a backlash or a pushback towards the reality. Because I certainly understand as like black people that we should desire to approve our economic, our economic standing on all capacities. Because there's been a lot of institutional things that have happened and continue to happen that make it harder for us to progress individually and as a community. So I, I understand, you know, wanting to push for a better image or wanting to push for better financial standing. But um, I just don't hear a lot of talk of reality. I hear a lot of talk of, again, black women deserve luxury. And then there's a whole lot of video that influencers and content out there where women are looking cute all the time in these really nice new outfits and really nice new places and really beautiful homes. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. I wanna live in a beautiful home. Um, I like nice clothes. I like going out to restaurants. I love having good experiences. Not saying there's anything wrong with that, but I'm like, how much of this is based upon reality? And I think, especially as a, as a person, as an average person looking at this content, I think it's especially important to not compare yourself to the facade that we see, because that image that we see is largely a facade. It says too many women resorting to using their bodies to pay bills. You're right. You're right. I mean, that's why I mean, only fans. <sighs> I mean, that's just one, but yeah, there's there's a lot of women because they find themselves, a black women in particular, black and brown women in particular, they find, them, they find themselves struggling. Um, then as a result, it's like you resort to what you know how to, which is, you know, only, you know, like only fans or doing things with your body or starting to sell your body because you're like, I'm just trying to make ends meet. And that's the reality of most people. That is the reality of most people. Champagne taste on a beer budget. That's real. And I think honestly, that has something to do with the, um, kind of goes back to the, the dinner whore mentality. Some, some people literally do, they start to use dates. They start to use finding relationships as a way to, um, 
to kind of compensate for where they're just where they are not financially. So, um, you know, there's a, there's a lot there. There is a lot there, but I think what is um, really important, especially important, is to recognize the reality. Eighty percent of Americans, again, and this and this this stat I found on the Washington Post before the pandemic, they said about eighty percent of the Americans live paycheck to paycheck. Meaning, if they miss one paycheck, they miss one bill, they or if they miss one paycheck, they won't be able to pay a bill. Some bills are going paid. That's most people. Eighty percent. Means if you line ten people in a line, eight out of those ten people, they will miss a bill. They will they will not be able to pay their light bill or the rent or whatever if they just miss one paycheck. That is a really high amount of people. So let's you know again idea of hypergamy, level up, secure your bag, you know, get all getting all these guys to lavish all this money on you. I'm just like, well, where? Again, now now. Of course, we you know when we start looking at the boomer generation and older generations, retirees, one, they lived under a different economy. Two, if you've, if you've been working 30, 40 years, of course, you would expect that you're going to have better, you're just going to be in a better financial standing. Like my parents, uh, my grandparents, people my grandparents' age, their financial situation is way different. Like I can even remember, for example, my parents, they're both, they both teachers, right? They retire. 100% of their medical is paid. 100% of their dental is paid. There's like, there's pension. There's there's different things. Now, if I wanted to be a teacher, you're, I mean, I'm having to pay, I'd have to pay a couple hundred dollars every single month on medical. I wouldn't have nearly as much of the retirement benefits. Like this, all these things have changed in the system just over the years, right? And so I can I can even I can even look at that and say okay where they're at you know what they had under their old the old system you know the old educational system like where we're at today it's completely different when they retire they're gonna have all these these medical and different things and they work for it they deserve it but now if I was to do the exact same thing I wouldn't have those same benefits and so like I said even when we look at the older generation of course they are going to be in a better place financially simply because they've been working longer. But also many of those, you know, many of the jobs, many of the different benefits that they were afforded at that time, we don't necessarily have that in this current generation. And so again, that's why I think it is important to understand, okay, this is the reality where we're at. Okay, how do we make the best of it? What does that mean? And of course, that is a separate conversation if you want to talk about, okay, how do you want to improve? How do we improve our economic standing, you know, individually? How do we do that together as a community, as a Black community? That's a whole separate conversation. But I think um, as it stands today, it is important to know, um, especially if you're a woman who desires to be in any form of a romantic relationship, relationship period, most people in this current economy struggle. Struggle love exists. Struggle love meaning they hit at some point in their life where finances may not be where they want to be. Or, hey, maybe somebody loses a job or, you know, um, paycheck is later, whatever, and they miss a bill. That is actually the majority experience. That is the majority. That is a majority. And it is a small percentage of people who don't have that experience. Generally, people who grow up in wealthy families which tends not to be most black people, <laughs> right? Of course, you have the small, small, small top percent, you know, um, athletes and the, the top, you know, percent of, I don't know, entertainers. So you have that small percentage. But again, that's a whole, that's a whole separate circle and lifestyle that you have to get into um, if you are ready to live that way. And most people aren't able to get in that circle, don't even really desire to get in that circle. They just desire the money, Um and again, that is harder to come by in this economy. So, <clears throat> yeah, a man in a suit goes farther in life than a man in sweats. Yeah, that's no, that's true. Totally, totally. Um, I mean, how you dress and how you perceive it just go a long way. Um, it says the backlash about bondage just shows you everyone is against black. <laughs> everyone is against black women. Yeah, that's actually another topic. I do want to talk about the bonnets because um, it's a sad thing to say. Like, I could, I could totally see. A Kim Kardashian or a Kylie Jenner wearing a bonnet and then all of a sudden and being like a beauty craze. I wouldn't be surprised if that happened within a few months or a few years. If they literally came up with a head wrap and then called it like, oh, here's the Kim wrap. And then it became like a new beauty, a, a beauty trend. I know it's annoying, but that's a whole nother topic. <laughs> um, so anyways, um, let me see if I have any other more crazy statistics. So as I mentioned before, um, about 40% of, of, of black women right now are like 
at or below minimum wage. That is 40% of us, a really high percentage. And so most of us are struggling. It just is what it is. And um, I think I think why it's important to recognize that is not so that you can feel bad about yourself, not so that you can beat yourself up. Um, there's nothing wrong with like wanting to work and, and do better and get out of that financial situation. But I think when it comes to, you know, wanting to find a partner or wanting to even be in a relationship or be married, um, generally speaking, you work, you, you get together with somebody, you guys put two incomes together. It's, it's just a little bit easier. So start there. Even if you're, if you are 15, if you are on $15, you know, $15 an hour, if you marry somebody else who's maybe making twenty dollars an hour, yeah, maybe you're not living rich, but you're probably going to be a little bit better off because now you guys are sharing, splitting some bills. Um, but I think it's important if you find yourself in that financial situation to not just completely overlook men or overlook people who are on your level, you know, who are on your level financially or who may not be making a ton of money at that moment because most people don't. Most people don't. Like I said, eighty percent of people live paycheck to paycheck, and so let's please not, please don't like get caught up in the fantasy of, oh, I'm not going to settle unless he's making X, Y, and Z, or he's not making all this money. Because like I said, most people ain't making money like that. They're just not. And if they are, then they're like, then they're f over 50, you know what I mean? Or they're older or they're retirees. And unless you are as a young woman or, you know, as a woman of age, want to marry a retiree, if you want to marry somebody within, your own, somebody within your own age range, you're probably going to have to build. You're probably going to have to work with that person and say, okay, we're here now, but we're going to work towards X, Y, and Z, A, B, and C. And that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. But the whole build a boo, um, you know, the whole build a boo thing, like, or build a bob, that's what people have to do. That's what our grandparents did. That's what our parents did. They got together, many of them, when they were young, you know, worked together, acquired homes together, acquired whatever. Like, that's just what people did. And so there's nothing wrong with you getting together with somebody and building and growing towards something that doesn't make you less of a person. And it doesn't mean that you're settling. It just probably means that you're living within reality, but that's just my personal opinion. So, um, yeah, those are just my thoughts. Um, so again, thank you for those who have tuned on. Um, please, again, if you like this content, I would really appreciate your support. I want to be able to, to just talk more about these things and just, basically address more topics, but I will need your support and able to do so. So please find me on Cash App, find me on Venmo, Shay Charday. Um, also, if this, if you find this content interesting, please like, or just share it, comment. Um, like I said, I, I really want to be able to have these real life conversations. We, we got to talk about it, especially women. We have to talk about the fact that we have a lot of people talking about hypergamy, but meanwhile, we're in a pandemic. Some of us were kind of, kind of getting out of it, but the financial and the economic repercussions are have yet to really been unfolded. And so, um, you know, you're going to be hard pressed to find a guy who has all these millions of dollars in the bank, uh, unless you want to be with a retiree. And then even then you have to know that there is a lifestyle associated with that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, so we just got to be reality. We just got to be based in reality. Seriously. Um, you can't tell women to not look over regular men. <laughs> misogynistic. Yeah, no, I think, I mean, I, I think there is, that's why I wanted to talk about this because I think a lot of, sometimes there's a lot of women who don't understand that the, the best option for you could literally be living next door or he could be in your church in your Bible study. Like he could be right there, but you're so hell bent on this Disney Hollywood idea of what love looks like. And that's not the reality that is not the reality for most people. It's just not, you know, and so many of us were fed this lies and it's just, it's just, it's not helpful. It's just not helpful. And I think it's hindering a lot of people and, I, and, and, you know, it's bad. It's bad when you have bad expectations because when those expectations aren't met, then you're disappointed and you feel like you lost or you were, you know, you missed out on something. And it's like, no, the reality is not, it's not that you didn't miss out on something. It's that you weren't told the truth. <laughs> many of us weren't told the truth. So um, I think that's why it's actually good to know this is what's going on. So if you tuned on, if you just tuned on later, as I mentioned before, um, just a few rather daunting but true stats that it's 24% of black women who live below the poverty line. So it's poverty lines here, black women, like 24%, one out of four black women are here. Let, let me, to me, that's wild. 
Um, and it's only about 26% of black women, again, only about one out of four black women who make $50,000 or more. So again, for all this, black women are, are outpacing men. You know, black women are starting more businesses or f finishing more college degree or starting more college degrees, all that kind of stuff. At the end of the day, one out of four of us is below the poverty line. And one out of four of us only makes $50,000 or more. That's not saying a lot. As I said before, about 42% of Americans make $15 or less. And again, this, you can literally find, you can just Google, you can find a Washington Post. Like you, you don't even have to go that far to just see, you know, how people are struggling economically. Many of you guys probably know people. If you're not struggling, you know people. You have family members, you have cousins, you have friends who are struggling. They are working hard, they are working jobs, and they are struggling financially, okay? Um, like I said, three out of 10 Americans do not have any emergency savings. So if there's any kind of extra bill, a medical bill, they got to go somewhere, something in their house breaks, something in their car breaks, whatever, they don't have anything to secure them. Um, like I said, 33% of Americans say that they know a relative who had to stop medical treatment because it was too expensive. It's one out of three. That is ridiculous to not be able to afford medical treatment for your own health. But this is the reality that people live in. This is the reality. It's not, oh, hypergamy, oh, he bought me this, so he bought me this size car. Oh, I was able to, you know, get him to buy me this, or, you know, my sugar baby took me out, X, Y, and Z, A, B, C. It's that you know a person who was not even able to pay or afford their own medical bills. That is the reality that people live in. And then about 40% of black women make about $15 or less, 40%. So what does that mean? Most people will have struggle love. <laughs> Most people, if you decide to marry, you will end up with somebody who maybe at one point in time in your life, finances may not be where you want them to be. Doesn't mean there's anything wrong with you. Doesn't even mean you're a horrible person. Doesn't mean that you're lazy or he's lazy. It means that we live in an economy that produces this result. Like I said, if 80% of people in America are living paycheck to paycheck. These are people who are working in the workforce, working full time, working at Google, working at Apple, working at Facebook. I know some of these people. If 80% of those people, if they were to miss one paycheck, could not pay a bill, then that likely just means, hey, we live in a pretty tough economy. And then you adjust and move forward. Again, does not mean that you can't decide, desire to do better. It doesn't mean you can't even change your situation or work towards doing better. But again, it is important to have a really solid and real expectation as to what's going on. Because most people out here, even what they're portraying on social media, they're not living that fantasy. They're not living that lifestyle. And even those women who do, maybe when they're young, marry a guy that's making all this money to where they don't, they don't find themselves a part of the 80%, they're living a lifestyle <laughs> they're living under a code of ethics that most women wouldn't want to live up to, that most women couldn't even handle. <laughs> so it's like, literally, it's like, you got to pick and choose. What do you want? But either way, this is, there's not a fairy tale. There's not a, a, you know, a Disney. You just have to choose what's going to work for you and make it work. So, um, <laughs> so yeah, that is just, you know, a few of my thoughts. Um, I want to talk about this later, but um, you guys, you love this content. Please support the channel. I want to, I want to have more content like this. I would love to stay on, um, but I really need your support. So please find me on Cash App. Find me on Venmo, Shay Charday. Please fill in to send, uh, send in your super chats. If you like this content, share it. Um, please subscribe if you haven't already. Leave your comments. Um, let me know what you think. So um, I'm going to sign off for the night. Um, I appreciate all of you guys who have tuned on. And yeah, we will talk later. All right. Bye.